introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Dr. Cicero M. Fain III. I'm the Assistant Provost of Inclusive Excellence and Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Fellow. I'm also a fourth generation Black Huntingtonian. Talk to me about the history uh, that you remember of Hal Greer in this area and what you remember from just the lineage that he has here in the statue. Well, um, well, I was a small cat when, when, uh, when Hal hit the, hit the scene. My dad remembers him. Finally, my dad went to school with him at Douglas High. Uh, my dad was uh, two classes behind him. And um, because of that, they didn't spend a lot of time together. Uh, but Hal Greer was well known, uh, well respected, well regarded, and so was the family. Uh, they lived on uh, 19th Street and Dalton Avenue. Um, and um, my dad remembers at one point in time he was working at St. Mary's Hospital. And um, Hal and another gentleman came up and wanted my dad to introduce the two guys to the black nurses that were working there. Um, and he did, and I don't know if anything ever became of it, but my dad really does have uh, good memories of, of Hal. Um, Hal, you should know that also Hal was, I mean, he was a great athlete, all-around athlete. He played for the Douglas uh, High football team. And back in that day, they played both ways. Uh, I think he was an in, so uh, he played until he um, injured a leg or knee, and uh, that ended his football career. I think he also played baseball for, for Marshall maybe his freshman year here um, in conjunction with playing basketball. Um, and so he was, he was just a great athlete all the way around. Um, my dad also remembers uh, at one point in time how Greer bringing down some NBA All-Stars and they, they played a game at the Memorial Fieldhouse. And my dad got the chance to meet those all-stars because they all gathered at Hal's house. And he walked, my dad remembers walking down the street with Elgin Baylor uh, for, for a good chunk of time, uh, made an indelible imprint upon my dad. And he discovered that um, Elgin Baylor had a tick um, that, that, um, that was not well known, but but really impacted the way he approached the game and played the game. Um, and, and then we know, we go on to, to how becoming the first, I believe he's the first African-American athlete to play pro basketball at a, at a public university in the state, um, you know, setting all kinds of records, increasing his scoring average, picked in the second round, I do believe, of the, of the NBA draft. What? Fifth, playing 15 years, 10-time NBA All-Star, uh, shooting that funky uh, free throw when he would jump up and shoot the free throw. I do remember seeing him do that, and I was like, wow, that's something else. So um, there's just no question about it. He, he was just a remarkable basketball player. Uh, and you think about him at the same, being on the, playing in the league at the same time as Jerry West and Oscar Robinson. Um, I mean, just, just incredible. Um, uh, I think uh, they won, he played, won the championship, I do believe, in 1967 with Will Chamberlain, uh, beating the San Francisco Warriors who had um, Rick Barry at that time. Uh, I do believe at one point how may have gotten the most valuable player of the NBA uh, championship. Um, and I think at one point he had a 28 point scoring average during, the, uh, during those playoffs. So uh, just a remarkable basketball player, uh, all around athlete, all around skills. Uh, I think when he finally retired, he, he led the league in, 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 um, uh, in several categories. Um, so we're proud to call him uh, a Huntingtonian. Uh, he's just one of many athletes who have come out of here, and uh, but it, there are a few who have, I can maybe maybe only one, who has achieved the lofty heights that he has achieved.